G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It is currently Friday morning by the time you're watching this. And, uh, you know, I will be doing another trade update later today. Um, obviously, this is the final day of the trade, well, first week of the trade period. Going to have a little break over the weekend and then all the action will resume on Monday for another handful of days. But in today's video, I was kind of just want to address uh, probably a bit of an elephant in the room with what's happening at, at Fremantle. It seems like every single trade period that comes and goes, we're dealing with a new batch or you know star player from Fremantle that wants to leave, and I'm sure that you've seen since the Lockie Shields um, story that he has requested a trade to Collingwood. Even on this channel, I've talked about it briefly. Uh, but the amount of players that want out of the Fremantle Football Club over the last six years is absolutely staggering, and it's something that's worth being addressed. So, look, disclaimer: I am an Eagles fan, and uh, I don't want this to come across as though I am going hard at the rival team of the Eagles. I just think it's a, an interesting topic topic that uh, we need to discuss and to be honest so for three of fans listening and watching uh, I'm as interested in some insight from you guys as much as anything but in this video I kind of want to just map out exactly what's happened to Fremantle in terms of their play retention over the last six years and try and diagnose the issues and to be honest I don't know if I have an answer but we'll come up with some discussion points anyway. As an aside if you are looking for all the latest trade content uh, this is the channel to subscribe to. As I've already mentioned you know I, I do just about daily updates on what's going on and I'll continue that through the trade period up until the conclusion and then of course it's going to go hard at draft content after that but if you do me a favor and subscribe if you're enjoying the content it'd be much appreciated love to get to 23k by the end of trade period probably won't happen but why not set an audacious goal Cool, so Fremantle, uh, not to go back too far, but at the end of 2016, we're in fact very early in 2016, they go 0-8 after being minor premiers in 2015. They embark on a long rebuild under Ross Lyon um, and things are a little bit rough there for a couple of years. That's as to be expected, these things are cyclical. We probably didn't see the fallout coming uh, you know, so dramatically in 2016, but nonetheless it happened and Fremantle begin their rebuild uh, at the end of 2016 basically. So the end of 2017 is really where the retention issues kind of begin at least uh, it didn't seem like that at the time but that is where the pattern began for Fremantle over this period as well so 2017 at the end of that year Lockie Weller requests the trade back to the Gold Coast Suns he is Tasmanian originally but has links to the Gold Coast Suns I think he was part of their academy once upon a time or something like that he requests a trade uh, back to his home state what, what he considers to be home Fremantle famously get picked two out of that deal which is miraculous they end up with Andy Brayshaw happy days uh, in that offseason they also uh, lost Harley Ballack RIP of course he requests a trade home back to, to Victoria. Um, Harley Ballack, you know, going into that draft where he was drafted, I think in 15, I think it was fairly well known that he was always going to be homesick. So probably can't mark Fremantle too harshly on that. They took a punt on him in, in the pick in the 30s, I think. So that this, that sort of thing happens. And then Hayden Crozier as well requests a trade uh, back to the Western Bulldogs at the end of that year as well. So that's three players. So far, nothing too concerning. It's a blow. The first round draft pick has requested a trade home in Lockie Weller, but they extracted all they could uh, in in terms of value out of that, they've got Andrew Brayshaw, fairly successful offseason to be honest. 2018 happens and uh, again, another rebuilding year, Fremantle, uh, I didn't write down where they finished that year, but towards the bottom of the ladder and uh, there's a bombshell trade request, Lockie Neal, one of their best players, requests a trade to the Brisbane Lions who at the time were struggling. This was when Brisbane was still down towards the bottom of the ladder, uh, around the same range as Fremantle I'd imagine. This was before uh, they you know, shot up in 2019 to make top two. Lockie Neal requests a trade. Uh, he's not from Queensland. He's from South Australia. Uh, and generally, it's, the understanding was that he just sought a really good short-term and medium-term future at the Brisbane Lions than he did at Fremantle. This raised a few eyebrows at the time, but obviously he was proven right. So that was a big off-season for Fremantle and it helped them get Jesse Hogan and Rory Lobb back to the club. And, you know, in isolation, these deals, that looked like some really good business. Jesse Hogan at the time was this young West Australian key forward star playing for the Melbourne Footy Club. Had gone through some personal stuff, but even on the footy field. I think he had a 40-odd goal season. Rory Lobb also looked like a talented young key forward out of GWS and, and Fremantle who had always struggled to replace Matthew Pavlich in terms of a key forward target. You know, this looked like a, a really good uh, piece of business in the face of adversity. They, they want to keep Lockie Neal, but they turned it into Hogan and Lobb. On paper, pretty good business, but they still lost Lockie Neal. 2019 hits and Ed Langdon is the player that requests a trade home to Victoria. Now this one, um, you know, on paper, you kind of think, okay, Victorian talent just wants um, maybe some better 
opportunity, more money, just wants to go play home in Victoria, sure. Uh, but there was, well, there was a little bit of innuendo as to why Ed Lang had actually left. It wasn't because of opportunity. He got 22 games for Fremantle that season. I won't go into the details of that rumor, but a lot of people have heard it already. But there, suffice it to say, a pretty isolated case of uh, teammates not getting along. We don't even know if that's true. But either way, another Victorian talent lost to go back to Victoria. So, so far we're seeing a little bit of a pattern. And then in 2021, uh, at the end of the year, the worst happens for Fremantle. The, the story they didn't want to hear all year was that Adam Cheryl was going to request a trade home to Victoria. That's exactly what he did. So he makes his way to Carlton. In the end, it turned out pretty well. They got Jai Amos out of that deal, or at least the draft pick to secure Jai Amos in the draft. They also give up on the Jesse Hogan experience. Unfortunately, you know, his personal issues were kind of weighing him down. It wasn't working in Perth, he gets traded to GWS. So they've already lost a player that they brought in to replace a player that left. Again, in isolation, these ones are you know hard to really blame Fremantle for. The Jesse Hogan one was probably the right call in terms of what was happening in his personal life. His commitment to the club was being questioned and, and that was probably a fair move. And Adam Chera, from the sounds of it, was probably always going to leave Perth for Victoria. And I do actually respect that Fremantle had the balls to draft him anyway. But again, this is starting to stack up. There is no proven ability really to to retain these talents. Then in 2020, Brad Hilt decides he wants to leave the Fremantle Dockers. And uh, I'm not sure what year it was he won the best and fairest, but he was a pretty well-performed player for Fremantle. I think I want to say 2018, 19 was when he was playing his best footy for them. I could be wrong. But Brad Hill's a West Australian who had requested a trade from Victoria to Perth to play for Fremantle just a number of years before this. He decides that he is shipping off to Melbourne. Now, I, I again, this is kind of rumor and conjecture, but there was a suggestion that you know he and his partner just preferred the Melbourne lifestyle. So yet another player walks out on Fremantle. Forgive me, I realize I've put 2020 and 21 in the wrong order. Uh, that's okay, you'll get over it. 2022 is where this really starts to come to a head. Fremantle lose five players, okay? Blake Akers, Griffin Logue, Darcy Tucker, Rory Lobb and Lloyd Meek. Now we'll go through them all individually. Blake Akers had come from St Kilda to join Fremantle and enjoyed, you know, a fairly good season. There was at least one season there where he was a clear best 22 player. Suddenly, after just a few years back in his native Perth, he wants to go back to Victoria alongside Griffin Logue, another Western Australian requesting a trade to Victoria. Both of these players, it was reported, were offered underwhelming contracts, presumably because Luke Jackson was coming into the club. Fremantle couldn't stump up the cash to pay these guys what they were worth, and arguably that would have been the difference between keeping them and losing them. Darcy Tucker also made his way back to North Melbourne, a uh, Victorian originally. He's a bit more of a fringe player, whereas you'd say Logan Akers probably formed a more important part of that best 22 to 25 bracket of players. Darcy Tucker was a clearly a fringe player and they weren't going to lose too much sleep over that with all respect due to uh, Darcy Tucker. Rory Lobb, again, another player that they brought in to replace a player that left. He was part of the Lockie Neal trade period, if you will. Another West Australian native who had played in Sydney for a number of years, uh, plays a few years at Fremantle, a little bit maligned, had a really good season last year by his own standards with 36 goals and a team that is trying out for forward targets and then he wants to leave as well. So that's the third Western Australian Australian in this group that is obviously from West Australia and has requested a trade to Victoria. Lloyd Meek was a player that was probably stuck behind Sean Darcy, let's be honest. So him moving to Victoria to Hawthorne specifically for more opportunity, that one's kind of justifiable. But as a mix, that is a lot of players that left Fremantle in one hit. Of course, David Mundy retired as well, but that is pretty separate. Now we're here in 2023 and they've got two players that have requested trades. And as I record this, they have not been uh, finalized yet, those deals. So Liam Henry, another Western Australian native, a top 10 draft pick through their Next Generation Academy, a player that they've had a relationship for a little while now. He's requested a trade to Melbourne too. I actually don't really know why, to be honest, because uh, obviously in comparison to Sarong and Young, who were taking in the draft right before Henry, He's taken a little bit longer to come on, uh, but this year was uh, somewhat of a breakout year. Got more opportunity, averaged a lot more of the footy, um, seemed to be progressing in a positive way, and now has requested a trade to Victoria, a place, a place where he's not from. Then there's Lockie Schulz. Obviously, uh, one of the bigger headlines from this trade period has requested a trade a year out from becoming a free agent, wants to get to Collingwood. This one has been highlighted as family reasons or personal reasons, so I will acknowledge that. But So adding a little bit of context to that as well, it's worth watching the back chat uh, clip or the podcast itself with Lockie Schulz and he talks about how Lockie Schulz has never been a year where it wasn't a contract year for him. You know, he did a couple of years on the rookie list. Uh, 2020 was a weird year where clubs admittedly didn't know list sizes, so Fremantle had to be a little bit cautious with contract they offered him. The last two seasons, though, he has been top six in the BNF. Honestly, like, I'm a person that rates Lockie Schulz. Obviously, he just won a Glendening Allen medal against my footy club, but I was kind of shocked he wasn't on a three or four year deal, to be honest. So that is a little bit of mismanagement, whichever way you slice it. 
Lockie Schulz is almost certainly underpaid. I won't go as far as to say that Fremantle have mistreated him because I am on the outside. But at the same time, this is a byproduct of not paying players what they're worth. And that has cost them, you know, a handful of players that I've already mentioned. So if my math is correct on this, I believe that is 15 players between now and 2017 that have wanted out of Fremantle. And a lot of those were West Australian. Four of them were traded in during that period as well, or around that period. Brad Hill, Jesse Hogan, Rory Lobb, and Blake Akers. All four of those were West Australians. So without, I'm not trying to rag shit on, on Freeman. I'm trying to map out the exact situation we're talking about here. So for a start, you can accept that um, I'm being factual and I'm not just trying to sling mud at them. But this is a very, very real problem that I think has hampered their rebuild. Freeman has taken a little while to become competitive again. You know, it was 2015 was the last time they were generally in the mix for a flag. Okay, 2022 was a pretty good year. They finished fifth. Lost a lot of experience. A lot of those players that I mentioned, five left at the same time. They bounced right out of the eight. It would be foolish to argue that this is not hampering them in some way. Now, I think Fremantle are a pretty savvy organization, to be honest, as an outsider looking in. And what I mean by that is their ability to turn these bad situations into good value trades, I think, has been pretty good. The Lockie Weller deal comes to mind. They got, you know, pick six uh, for Adam Chera. Lockie Neal turned into Hogan and Lobb, and obviously none of those players hit their straps at Fremantle, but at the time, that was a very, very good deal. I think they are shrewd operators. They've also had no trouble attracting other players to their club. So uh, there's a number of players that I'm going to list that I've probably, I probably haven't got them all, but Will Brody, Nathan Wilson, James Aish, Luke Jackson, Jago O'Meara, and Josh Corbett. I think three of those are West Australian, one South Australian, and two Victorians. Luke Jackson, obviously, they had to fight a, a big effort by the Eagles as well to get him, and they, they've done that. So they're recruiting good. Um, their ability to attract players, just fine. Their negotiation skills, solid, but their retention is a nightmare. And I'd love to know why. I don't know what it is. You know, the, in terms of trying to find a common thread between a lot of these situations, the two biggest reasons for leaving, probably underpaid and not valued enough in terms of their contract. Secondly, preferring the Melbourne lifestyle. Now forgive me, but that is not a super compelling reason to leave the footy club. And I don't wanna make this a West Coast and Fremantle thing because obviously comparing the two clubs right now, that is not gonna make us look very good right now. We are a mess, but we're talking about Fremantle here. West Coast has lost like three players to trades in that same time period. So what is West Coast doing right and, and what is Fremantle doing wrong in this particular space? It's not a rhetorical question. I don't know the answer to that. Is it cultural? Perhaps, perhaps there has been a revolving door sort of policy almost at Fremantle where it's 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 sort of like when GWS started to bleed players every year because they had more talent than they could potentially keep on their list. It's almost not even taboo to to talk about trades and and look what's happening over east and try and find a better place to play your career. For whatever reason, West Coast players aren't doing that. And the reason I think West Coast is a good comparison is because they are in the same city. The lifestyle of Perth is the same. One thing I'll highlight though is, you know, it's kind of a given that when a team is rebuilding, their retention is probably going to be worse because Fremantle have spent a large chunk of the last few years rebuilding and players probably are impatient, etc. By comparison, West Coast has kind of fallen to a heap like recently and therefore we'll see over the next few years how well they keep their, you know, their young stars, Harley Reid, for instance, if that happens. But I think this goes beyond simply, you know, oh, they're a rebuilding club, they're struggling to keep players. You've got West Australians walking out the door, you've got players walking out because they're not paid enough. I'd love to know what it is. Fremantle don't strike me as a club that have a bad culture, to be honest, but there's something going on here and they need to fix it, to be honest. So as always, guys, I welcome your, your comments and thoughts on the uh, everything we discussed in this video. I'd love some insight for Fremantle fans. Hope you perceive this and interpret this in the right way. My job, well, if you want to call it a job, is to try and analyze topics that I think are worthy of discussion. I think everything we've discussed here is worthy of discussion. I can't avoid talking about it just because it's Fremantle. Ideally, I would have had a you know, Fremantle supporting guest on here. Um, I would have had Jeruzzi, but he's up living his best life in uh, Madrid at the moment. So maybe we'll talk about it when he gets back. But for now, I uh, hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the comment section. Cheers.